Lick number two coming up here, and uh, I particularly like this one for a few reasons, which I'll get into here in a second, but first let me play the lick for you. One more time. And one more time, just a bit slower. Okay, so uh, let me start breaking that down for you a little bit here. Here's our opening lick, which uh, again, I've talked about this lick a lot because you hear it a lot. It's a classic blues rock staple out of the pentatonic scale. Starts with a bend here on the uh, third string, tenth fret of a whole step. And then we go to the uh, second string, eighth fret, first string, eighth fret. So. Cool little three note sequence and you got to be able to play it in time. Now uh, from there we go. Now I like that, that's pretty cool. We're going from the uh, second string, 11th fret to the 8th fret, first string, uh, 11th fret to the 8th fret. And I, I kind of think that's cool because it's it's just not really what you would normally expect. Normally you would either come down the scale or up the scale but to play these two notes backwards and then play those two notes backwards. It's just a nice little twist. Now we got... Now that's really a triplet figure. One, two, three, but it's got this little grace note right here. So uh, a grace note is a note that really doesn't have any time value. It's it's just part of the sequence. It happens so fast that it doesn't really count as part of the triplet itself. So there, what I'm doing is I'm going from the um, third string, tenth fret, up to the second string, eighth fret, down to the third string, eighth fret, and I'm doing this really quick hammer on down to the to the ninth fret there. And what I'm doing there, that's that's moving me from minor to major. And you always hear this uh, talk about minor pentatonic to major pentatonic. I'm going to visit that again here in just a second, but I want to finish the lick. And I come down here to the C. And here I go again. I got that same idea. The hammer on from the eighth to the ninth. And then back to our two notes up here on the first two strings. And then down the pentatonic scale. There's that same thing again, the hammer on, 10th fret, 4th string, 10th fret, 5th string. So that's a cool lick and it's a little bit more lengthy. Now, you always hear people talking about mixing the major pentatonic scale with the minor pentatonic scale. And that is one way to think about things. but. To me, I like to just simplify it a little bit more in my own thinking. I tend to think just minor pentatonic scale. And if I want to switch to major, then I just play the third of the chord, which is the major third of uh, the scale as well. So if I'm thinking this is a C7 chord, that E right there is part of the chord. So uh, when we're playing a blues, we're actually playing a flat three against uh, the major third there, which is really a wrong note if I just hear, hear that in this context. Of, you know, that's kind of kind of an out there note, but we've heard it so much in the blues rock realm that our ears will accept it as being okay. But all I got to really do is is I got to know the locations of the of the third of the chord or the chords, as the case may be. Now this. Lick is strictly a chord that a lick that works over the C7 chord or the one chord if we happen to be in another key, because we're targeting the third of the chord here. So if I just know that there's the third of the chord and here's the third of the chord up here on the first string, I can always play those notes. And that's going to take me from minor to major. I don't have to think about 
going from a minor blues scale to a major blues scale or a minor pentatonic scale to a major pentatonic scale, I just target this note. And I don't even have to approach it from the half step below. And one of the things I like to think of is also is the, the arpeggio for that chord, C7 arpeggio. Which has the, the E natural in it in three different spots. So there's my pentatonic scale, and here's my my C7 arpeggio. So I really just tend to blend those, and again, the, the only difference between them is the E note. So again, it's really just a matter of where's that E note located, and do I want to throw it in? So I can even do it down here on the, uh, the fifth string. Here's my E flat down here in the scale. And I can just come back there to that E note. Or also catch it out here on the 12th fret. So let me play this lick for you against the track, and we'll try to break it down a little bit and see how that works out. So remember, first thing is to play it in time. Now, I cannot play that lick here against the F chord because the E is now the wrong note. So you have to be careful sometimes, and I'm going to be talking about that a little later on uh, in, in some of the future videos as well. Not every note of the scale always works against every chord. So again, the reason that doesn't work against the F7 chord here coming up, the F7 chord has an E flat in it, and if I play the, the E, it's a wrong note. But it works beautifully against the C chord, and it will also work against the G chord because, again, we talked about collar tones, that's, that's the 13th against the G chord. You can hear it here against the C. And here comes the F. Not yet. Got lost count there. Here comes the F right now. And you can hear it doesn't work. Back to the E it works. And against the G it works okay. And the register can make a difference as well. Uh, it may not work as well against the G if I'm down here or uh, in the lower register, but it'll work fine up here in the upper register. Now, as long as I don't play that note, I can use parts of that lick over the F chord. spots in there where it's just kind of all over the place so um, there you go there's that lick now that one is not as easy maybe to break down across the whole spectrum of the the chord changes because again that E natural doesn't work against the F chord so uh, I got some more thoughts on that as we move into some of the other licks here uh, again this lick is a little trickier to play technically so work on it so you can get it up to speed and just play it over the track and mess around with it a little bit and again you can see I'm 
I'm messing around. It doesn't always work what I try to do, but that's okay. Everything you play, even when you're out on the bandstand, everything doesn't always work. And you take the good with the bad, and sometimes it all falls into place and you feel really good. And sometimes, you know, you, you feel like an athlete that has an off night. If you're into sports, you know, it's, Tiger Woods doesn't shoot par every time he goes out, so same thing. You know, some days you just hit it in the rough. What can I say? All right, that's enough of that one. I'll see you in the next one.